since you were talking about poverty, this is one of the, I think the second has one of the highest poverty rates in the, in the, in the country, uh, Milwaukee. And it also is one of the most segregated uh, in our entire country, but this man has been doing the work. Um, and I remember the story because it reminds me of uh Carter G. Woodson, the kids used to come walk across his grass, walk across his grass, and then he finally invited them in uh, to plant some stuff, and they took ownership of his lawn and his and his garden the way he couldn't even imagine. And in many ways, this man did the same thing in his neighborhood where the kids might have been, uh, you know, a little wayward, doing some things, uh, and there was an empty lot uh, near his home, and he started inviting the kids, paying them to show up on a Saturday. And it started with a couple of kids. And before he knew it, it was hundreds of kids that have come through his program. And it is amazing. It is the Andre Lee Ellis and Company Community Garden featuring Cage, which is community agricultural growing experience. Let me welcome him back. In my eight years here, this is one of the best people I've met uh, over my eight year period. Somebody I did not know. I met him at a an award ceremony that I actually uh, moderated. And I was so incredibly just inspired by him that I was like, I got to talk to him. And I kept him. I remember it like it was yesterday. Let me welcome back to the show, Mr. Andre Lee Ellis. All hey. right. All right. All right. Karen Hunter, I greet you in the brief words of that great poet laureate, Langston Hughes. Have you ever gone down to the river 2 a.m. midnight by yourself? Sit down by the river and wonder what you got left. Have you ever thought about your mother? God bless her dead and gone. You ever thought about your sweetheart and wish she'd never been born? Down by the Harlem River, 2 a.m. midnight by myself. Mm -hmm. Lord, I wish I could die, but who would miss me if I left? The voice of the forgotten comes through the garden cage was it was developed after we got this i left we got this because there was a young man that 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 started out with me i like the word succession and and we don't do this enough as black men at least in my city we don't take the younger men and have them work side by side and say look one day i will be gone from this or doing something else you'll take it over and continue travis harbin took over we got this that's what you met me at but then I found an acre of land next to the firehouse in another part of town that the fire chief came and said, what could she do that? And then I said, I could develop a cage. I was standing right there. And I said, I could develop a cage. And, I, and the acronym came to me instantly, Karen, Community Agricultural Growing Experiences. We, on the block where we live, we have to be the change that needs to be on the block where we live. We have to be the change and help the people see what we need. So I, I, I started it. And before I knew it, Karen, here's what happened. The young boys that got older from We Got This started coming to the garden. So whereas We Got This concentrated on the 12 to 16 year olds, I had the 17 and up. They were 50 years old coming over there saying, I need a job. I need things. And as you know, in Milwaukee, they, they're, we're, we're experiencing some high, some high levels of violence. We, we have shootings, six to nine shootings a weekend. And just day before yesterday, I believe, a two-year-old and his grandmother playing on the playground. He was shot three times, once in the side and twice in the stomach, and she was shot. They, I, I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think any one of them have passed, but another gentleman was shot. And so for me, the garden has to be a representative of a place of peace. It, it, and, and when they come there, they have to learn that as long as they keep their hands in the soil, they can keep them off the trigger of a gun. And I, I find that that's, that's what's happening. I want to give you the chance to ask me the questions. But we're, <laughs> but, but we're you got, excited. You know I will. You know we're, I'm going to ask. We're, we're, we're excited about what's happening. We're excited about, um, and I'm sure you ask me what's coming up, but I'm, I'm excited about uh, the 24-year-olds that started with me when they were 12 who have now come and said, I'm tired of violence. They've come home from jail and said, I want to do something different. The, uh, they have a baby and they want to do something else. Now they got a job and they're working and they're separated themselves from four boys riding in a fast car and 
running from the police because they stole it or whatever it is. And, and I say restorative justice, and you also have to give them the chance to be the voice in their neighborhood to say why I came back to show you that what I did didn't work. I want to make amends for it. And now I become a new person. I'm we just gonna let it sit for we're gonna let it rock for a while. I mean, because the thing that I this you don't need any questions. We just need to extract. Okay. So it's not there's no, there's not gonna be any questions. I mean, it's not an interview. Yeah. I brought you on today on my anniversary because I want to lay down the blueprint for everyone listening for how you pass the baton, for how you do success succession plans, how you uh, groom the person that's going to take over for the work that you're doing so that it doesn't stop when you're not here anymore. Mm -hmm. All of us will expire. Every single person listening to my voice will not be here on this side. That's right. We'll be ancestors. But what are we leaving for people to continue? The work right so right. so andre lee lee ellis you 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 had a little you know lot that nobody was paying attention to over an, over a period of time you got the boys in the community who might have been violent towards one another to put down their guns put down their fists and put their hand in soil and build and grow a garden right and it was and it was on one of the most violent blocks in the city for many years. And when I heard that, I said, that that can't be true. And they said, we were the worst place in America where you could raise a black boy. I said, hell, that can't be true. I live here. You know, that that's not true. So I went to work. So now at CAGE, we have an event coming up. Um, in December, December 10th, called the 500 Black Tuxedo event. And, mm. and we talked about that in the well, last interview. Right, right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because okay. this is this is so important. This is so important. And Jennifer has to dip in a minute. So I want her to to, to come in and, and, and get all of this goodness because I want definitely the tuxedo. We're going to talk about it. OK, I want to hear about that. But let, let me let me just talk to you a little bit about healing. Right. So this is Thrive Thursday. And we began this conversation today talking about healing. We talked about physical healing and mental healing. And I can't help but think when we talk about them putting their hands in the soil, there's a healing that is taking place through your work. Talk to us about the healing that you've seen in the people in the community. When your hands are in the soil, your face looks up to God. And when you can look into the face of God without anybody else hearing what you got to say to God, you can tell God what you want. And when I'm next to a little black boy that, that has told me that I'm not that bad, it's the people that raised me, that taught me how to be how I am, I tell him, tell God that. And then he can be like little Malik Taylor who who was one of the worst kids I worked with when he was 12 years old. I mean, Jennifer, I was running over to the school across the street, literally in my pajamas and long johns to snatch this kid up by the neck and say, you will not be one of the ones. Malik, two years ago, graduated from North Division High School at 16 years old, mm -hmm. out of the 11th grade. The day after graduation, he went into the Army Reserves, and he also also enrolled in Cardinal Stritch College, and he's now going to UWM. He's a sophomore. He's 18 years old. The other day, he just signed a paper for a new home that he's buying because he said he's tired of his mama paying rent and being um and being evicted from properties. So that's some of the change I've seen. Anthony LaPointe is yeah. graduating from the University of Wisconsin in Whitewater. Anthony was, was a youth that the first day he came to the garden, I kicked him out because here's one of my rules. When my lips are moving, yours better be still. And I don't give a whole <laughs> lot of chances like in the garden. If it's eight o'clock that we meet, if you come after eight o'clock, the gate is shut, shut and you can't come in. 800.1 is late. Mm. And I mean that. You just, and let me tell you something. I would sometimes get, Jennifer, a hundred boys on a Saturday morning that had to be there by eight o'clock to work from eight to 12 p.m. 8, 12 noon to get $5 an hour, $20 an hour, and they all call me pops. And, and, and I asked those 100 boys one day, I said, how many of you don't know your dad? 90 of them raised their hand. 
How many of you know your dad but still don't have a relationship with him? Five more raised their hand out of 100 boys who woke up on a Saturday morning to get to that garden by eight o'clock to do something earnest and honest to make a living and was happy to get that $20. Some of them walked there. Only five of them knew their dad. I had to tell them, I'm not your birth dad. I'm the earth dad. Ooh. And before, before you make a mistake, before you pull the trigger, bring me your gun and I'm gonna show you something else you can shoot with. You can shoot with knowledge. You can shoot with your heart. You can you can shoot with the trouble you have seen. You ain't you're not too young to do improvement on, on even the adults. You got some adult people, young man, that are looking for you to change. And when you do, you become better than their pastor. And I'm gonna show you how you can go from an F student to an A student simply by showing up being quiet and turning in the best possible work that you can. So what I've seen is a number of young men that, that Alan, Alan Armstrong was facing 10 years for to, to, to in court because he shot his dad in the thigh. And, and I was like, he's too young for, for that. So I, I begin to go to court with him and I've come up with what is called the new folder concept. So I work with judges in the juvenile system here. Mm -hmm. And the new folder concept is where I go into court with them and their public defender. And I say to the judge, I say, if you judge him on the old folder concept, he's gonna be judged like the slaves and he's gonna go to jail. Even, even, even if you wanna give him a, 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 a little time in jail and then out, I said, what you do is release him to the garden for six months, three to six months, let me have him. I guarantee you when I bring him back, he's gonna have a job. He's gonna have his driver's Ooh. license. He's gonna have a bank account. He's gonna know about financial literacy. He's gonna have some self-respect and he just might have a girlfriend that he don't slap on. You know what I mean? And so when mm. they come back to court and you judge them under the new folder concept, you have to release them to the community that was already making it true. So come to the garden, because in the garden they grow. And when little black boys, and I work mainly with the boys, I noticed when they pull a cucumber out of the you ground. You sounded like a modern day Moses. Yes. <laughs> you uh, are bringing me forward. You sound like yeah. a modern day Moses. When they, when yeah. they pull the cucumber out of the ground, when I say pull the cucumber out of the ground and I say, taste that. And they said, dirty like that. I said, take the water hose and wash it out. But remember this, the water hose water come from the city. It might have lead in it. You better <laughs> off to eat from the soil. Just wipe it off with your shirt or something. Cause if you were stuck outside and you needed to eat, you might not get to the water. Ooh. But bite the cucumber. And when they bite it and you see the juice fly up around their face and the taste of it, I then give them one of the store-bought cucumbers. I said, now taste this. Mm. I said, it's nothing like what you just tasted, is it? So keep growing your own. And when you teach them how to grow food, they learn how to grow babies. When they learn how to grow babies, they're growing. Their babies grow babies. And you create a whole generation of my grandmother, my grandfather, my earth dad taught me how to grow food. So therefore, I grow myself. Mm. Jennifer, on that note, I know you got to run, but that is Andre Lee Ellis. Oh, my goodness. You, you have you have met you have met the future and uh, it's and I fire. Need more of it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Jennifer, let's say thank you to Jennifer. I know you got to run. You know, you come thank back you, all the time. Robbie. Happy uh, anniversary. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Happy anniversary to you. I hope to see you on yours uh, as Absolutely. well at the end of the month. Love you. Uh, thank, thank you again. Thank you. All right. See you later, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> All right. And God bless you. I want to, I'm going to come to your website because I want to figure out how to support you. Come on. I'm yes. coming. I'm coming. Yes. I'm bringing some yeah. cucumbers with me. Hilarious. Y'all are cute. <laughs> All right. Um, I also tweeted out Jennifer's dad's book, um, God in the Ghetto, uh, which she re redid um, recently uh, last year uh, with a new forward. And uh, again, I think I'm sitting with somebody that is about liberation theology. You people in the in the chat are like, this man sounds like a preacher. Jennifer said you're like Moses, uh, a man with no children biologically somehow is the father of many. Talk about being a parent, knowing how to be a parent, even though you you weren't first uh, blessed with children yourself. Talk about how that transition happened. 
um, my wife and I, we have six children. Oh, and we have 23 and we have 23 grandchildren. OK, so, I thought last time you came on, you said you didn't have any children. No, at that at that time, it wasn't as many children, but the children got busy. OK, and it's more all children, right. You know, all right. All right. Because I'm like, how does a man with no children know how to do this? Oh, well, you know, I'm from a family of 14 children, number one, and I've many nephews and nieces, but I also didn't have the kind of dad guidance that I want the children, the young people to have. And then I saw the young brothers, you know, I just got tired of the gun shooting. I got, I got tired of, of people being sick and tired, but afraid. And I said, so you know what? We're gonna open up this garden. And, and when I was at, we got this and we started um, doing hamburgers and hot dogs on Saturdays and getting the neighbors to come. And before they could eat, they had to take a garbage bag and walk through the neighborhood and use the pickup sticks and clean the neighborhood up. And then when when they got back before we eat, I'd say, everybody turn around and look at our streets. Look how clean our streets are. And then they started seeing themselves in the news for, for cleaning up the neighborhood. Then they started hearing that the violence was low. And so it started growing. But now with Cage, what has happened is, um, the the opportunity to work with black men 17 to 50 years old is my new mission because 12 to 16 year olds are at we got this and my son Travis Hartman is doing a phenomenal job there but black men and I say 17 to 50 because even a lot of 50 year old black men still have childlike behavior if you've been in prison since you were 20 28 and you did 22 years when you get out of your 50 times have changed and you still got that 22 year old mindset and so you you need to be brought up to speed so our city and I'll say this, and I think it's a nationwide thing. Our city just doesn't have a lot of respect for black men 17 to 50 years old. And there's not a lot of programs out there for them and where they can go and get the resources. And, and a lot of times they're condemned if they're felons, they can't vote. They, they, it's a strike against them on the job. Even though a lot of jobs are being developed, the jobs that they get are 30, 40, 50 miles away. They can't get there or half of the check that they get from the temp service is used paying for transportation to get there. And so we're trying to create um, using agriculture we want to create resources so we can grow the food we're now housed inside the, uh, the firehouse five where we're doing um, hydroponics so that we can grow food in the fall and the winter time and what i want to do is take these men and they're going to become food salesmen where they go and we get in touch with the institutions the schools the prisons and everywhere that people need to be fed and have good food even some of the grocery stores and they become the sales people that sell the food and they make money and they find out that just like weed and other drugs you may not make the kind of money that you do but you sure have a different peace of mind and a better health and all you really need is enough to get by until you figure out how to get into real estate or, or how to save or, or what your next hustle is going to be. You don't always have to have a gun to stick somebody up and take from them and then, then, and then go home and wait till the people come and get you, whether it be the family of the people you hurt or whether it be the police to put you in prison. And Wisconsin has the highest rate of incarceration of black men in the world, in the world, mm -hmm. in the world. And, and, and recently they closed down the mental hospital here and they couldn't place everybody. So you have a large influx of people on the street with mental illness. And then we come behind this pandemic and there was no self-help and a lot of people need therapy from, from that and how to move on instead of acting like it's okay. We went right back to like it wasn't nothing, even after losing a lot of family members and things like that. So when I talk to a 38 year old black man, when I watch this Karen, when I talk to a 38 year old black man, 40 year old black man that's been in prison most of his life, when I talk to him and I can look in his face and see he's trying not to cry, but I know that he needs to take out life's trash. And I tell them that's what tears are, that if you don't let it out, the inside is gonna stink. And when your inside stink, your attitude gonna stink and your drive is gonna stink. But when I put my hand on their shoulder and I say one simple word, I say, son, the tears begin to flow.
Mm. And then I say, why are you crying? They say, because nobody never called me that. And I've been waiting for that. And they say, I didn't even know how to be that or show that to my own son. So since I was locked up, I chose not to be that. So we created a labyrinth, a labyrinth in the garden. It's a circle labyrinth. And we're building a healing house. And the healing house is where you walk the labyrinth. And by the time you get to the house, when you open the door, the first thing that's going to happen is a spritz of water. And I call that the awakening. It's going to spritz you because that's going to take you out of your depression. That's going to take you out of thinking suicide or what you can't do and all of that. And when you walk in, the light comes on and there's some music. Then there's a stand where you can make some tea or drink some water, but you can sit down for the rhythm for a minute. Like I said in the poem in the top, sit down by the river and wonder what you got left. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? you can sit down there and then you can begin to think about what's new, my new beginning, what's next. Uh, 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 and, and when and God is in that house and, and as long as God is in that house, you can be redeemed. And that's what we got to allow our young black men and older black men a chance to do a chance to recess from being called names, a chance to recess from being told what they can't have or can't do. I strongly believe, Karen, that as long as the resources are limited in a home and people leave home hungry and angry and they already got a gun, they're going to shoot and kill the next person that makes them angry or has what they want to take back to the house. We got it, and I'm speaking strong to to our, our politicians and different ones here that mm -hmm. and anyone listening in Milwaukee or anywhere, the, the when people are happy in their home, they are very right. they are happier people in the streets. And mm -hmm. when they come in the streets and things aren't right, they say, let me go home because I have what I need at the house. I may not that's have all, what I want, but mm -hmm. what I need. Andre Lee Ellis uh, is here. He's got, um, we're going to tweet out all of his information, of course. Uh, Cage, Community Agricultural Growing Experiences. Uh, he also has, we got, what is it? We got next. We got this. We got this program, which he came on to talk about to begin with. How do you help a man become a man, Andre Lee? What, what are the tenets of manhood? You, you know what I did? I stopped, I stopped smoking and getting high and tooting cocaine and doing the things that it took. And then I really got, I got, when I got married to my wife, I was really married to her. And I find that the example, uh, when men see your good works, they glorify the Father in heaven and they ask, what must I do to be saved? So I think the best way to do it for a young man or an older man, because I didn't always have it that way. So when young men see me doing it, they know that they can make it to an age. And what I don't do, I don't turn any of them away. I don't care and I don't call them names. So one way you help them is by being the example of truly being the man that you say you are. Whatever song you singing, you be those lyrics for real. And when it comes to the old men that that I work with, the ones that, that, that needed a second chance, I let them know I used to be this way and you can have a chance. And none of them, a lot of them have not had the blueprint for what manhood is. And I'm not sure that that's by design because each one takes something different. My mother had 14 kids, same rules. We all turned out different. Some of us speak still, some of us don't, but we love each other genuinely. And so I, I, I'm, the answer to that question would be to show them a better way, to lead them to the light of manhood, that it's okay to cry. It's, it's okay to be angry, but you don't have to sin. Where do you go and, 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 and get rid of that? Do you work out? Do you go to the lake? You know, mm. um, it's really quickly. I know um, the tuxedo program last time you were here. And if people go to, we got this MKE for Milwaukee.com. Don't go there don't to go support there. you. Where, you where, do you want, go, yeah, where do you want them to go? go to the cage MKE.com. 